بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقلة من لساني يفقه قولي أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وعد الأمانة ونصح الأمة وتركها على المهدة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه <coughs> uh, My dear brothers and sisters It is actually a great pleasure and honor to be amongst you uh, this morning and I'm very happy I'm seeing some faces that I recognize I feel like hugging them but it's against protocol so we'll do that later on Assalamu alaikum again um, my talk is going to be, inshallah, about um, an issue that is very important in our community, which is how we take care of ourselves as a community. It is a God-given right for every community to take care of themselves, but it also an obligation from Islam by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the practice of his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his commandment that we should look after ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رِجَالٌ صَدَقُوا مَا عَاهَ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ it said, amongst the mu'mineen, the believers, are men, and by implication, women as well, who have kept truthfully and honestly and earnestly their covenant and agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is that covenant? What is the total covenant? What is the promise? that we have with Allah? The answer is to fulfill the mission of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the promise that we have with Allah, is to fulfill the mission of Muhammad in one sentence. And the mission of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is stated in the Quran as وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ that we have not sent you, Allah is saying, except as a mercy for all the alameen, for all the universe, the people, the animals, the plants, anything that walks the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent Muhammad as a mercy for that thing. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away hundreds of years ago, but he left that message with us. He practiced it, he taught it, he recommended it, and he passed it on to us. In one of his hadith, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Irhamu man fil arb, yarhamukum man fi sama. Have mercy on the creation of Allah on earth. Allah in the heavens will have mercy on you. So his mission was care, character, kindness, and mercy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now as Muslims, we must follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's what makes us Muslims. We must follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ Tell them, O Muhammad, if you indeed love Allah, follow me. If you love Allah, follow me. In return, yuhbibkumullah. Allah will love you back. If you love Allah, follow me. So if you have this claim that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want to express that love, because Allah is not one that you have seen. Allah is not one that is in your house. The arsh and the kursi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not present in your environment or your compound. The way you express that love is to follow the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
This is very explicit in the Quran. There is no other way of saying it. And by comprehension and implication, to love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would mean to love the people of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, parents, if you tell a parent I love you, and you tell their kid I hate you, uh, they don't care if you love them. That is just between human and human. So if you care for me, you care for the one I care for. If you love Allah, you love the Prophet of Allah, then you love the people of the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So this is the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us, that if we love Allah, we follow the Prophet. It's very clear. So that's a very good point we must have in our minds. And for a Muslim, it's not complicated. How do you show, the, how, how do you follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Now there is another dimension, and that is the extent the extent to which you love the people of Muhammad to what extent? So the extent of the love and the connection among Muslims is expected to take a form similar to the blend of blood, flesh, and bones that make up the human body. So it takes the form that is similar to the blend we all know what blenders do, right? If you take uh, some fruits or vegetable and put them in blender and add water and mix it, you cannot separate things. So that is the way the, the, the connection and the love should be among the Muslims. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إذا اشتكى من وعود تداعى له السائر الجسد بالسهر والحمى. He says صلى الله عليه وسلم the example of the believers in their love for each other and their mercy towards each other and their responsibility for each other. Their love toward them, their mercy تراهمهم and their responsibility, the point to which one can lean on the other. That is like one single body, your body, not a body of people, your one single body. Now, he, then the Prophet explained how it works. If one part of the body complains, it has taken any, any organ, any part of the body complains, the rest of the body will all call each other. They will all be alert. Tada, huh? from Dawa, to call. Tada, they will call each other and say, hey, come on, everything has to stop until we deal with this guy. We have to get him out of trouble. You know when you get a blister on your hand, or a very minute foreign object enters your eye? And if you're an eye doctor, you stop doctoring first to care for your own eye. That is what happens. So very minute foreign object enters into your eye, you stop. Now you're thinking of your own body. This is how Rasulullah said we should connect with other Muslims. It is that intricate, it is that small. Imagine the systemic cooperation and complementation that exists in the body. They all cooperate. If you leave, you want to go somewhere, say you want to go have coffee in the back here. Right? Your mind tells the rest of your body, you rise up, and your backbone supports you, and your feet take you, and your hand operates, and your mouth opens, and your eyes sees, everything takes part. Everything takes part. This is Rasulullah's explanation of how the Muslims should be. Right? Not somebody is hungry, we don't care. Somebody is thirsty, it's not my business. Somebody is is in the gutter, is in jail? Well, it's not my responsibility. If we treat ourselves that way, we are totally far from the teaching of Rasulullah because the body, even if a minute portion, portion on your back, you know, it itches, small itch. You find a way to get there. 
you find a way. See, my hand is very flexible. It gets all the way to my back. I don't know why, but I know if something itches me, I get there. And I don't go, you're too small. No worries. Nobody does that. You go for it. So that's all Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a very, it's a very important similitude of how Muslims should be together. On the contrary, sometimes, and you cannot generalize why, because the khayr is in the ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam all the time. But sometimes you see attitudes that are totally different because this person is different, they don't speak my language, they didn't come from my home country, they don't look like me, they are white, they are black, they are Chinese, they are Indian. So, well, we are brothers, but not like one body. That attitude is not Islamic. As you don't even know part of your body, you don't even know any part of the Muslim woman. We do not have the right we do not have the instructions from Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to do that. True connection with Allah is a sincere, intentional secret that must have an impactful, positive, public manifestation. Let me say that again. True connection with Allah is a sincere, intentional secret. It's just between you and Allah. But it must have an impactful, positive, public manifestation. Your connection with Allah is secret. The manifestation must be public and must be positive. So he is a failure and she is a failure. He or she who claims to be a good worshiper of Allah and yet has nothing in personal goodness to show for it. He or she is a failure. If there is no goodness that comes out of you for people and you say you're connecting with Allah, you have to think again. People don't benefit from the number or the agile that you get from the number of raka'at that you make in your salah. Nobody benefits from that. You benefit from that. Yom al qiyamah, if you go into Jannah, you go by yourself. You go by yourself. And not even your brother or your sister, your mother, your mother, your father, your mother, 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 your People benefit from the interpretation of those raka'at into a positive environment where they can feel safe and accepted around you. If your salah doesn't lead you to that, maybe you need to, to do your salah again. Prophet said, Al Muslim man salim al Muslimun min lisani The Muslim is only the one who, when people interact with him or her, they feel secure and safe from the harm, from any harm of his hand or his tongue. He doesn't beat them, punch them, and he, said he doesn't put them down, he doesn't talk about them, he does not backbite them, he does not badmouth them, he does not carry tales about them, he does not neglect them. That is the Muslim. Allah says, Inna salat tanha anil fahshai wal munkir. That the prayer, the true prayer, when prayer is good, when it's done properly, it should send you away from fahsha, the disgraceful things, and munkar, and the hateful things, hurting people, things like that. So we need to build a community on this pillar, these pillars, brothers and sisters. So what is a true community? There are many definitions, many definitions. I read a few, one of them said, a group of people living in the same place, that's a community. Another one says, a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes. Apparently that's another community. Another one says, 
a body of persons or nations having a common history or common social, economic, and political interests. That's another definition of community. In Islam, a true community is one that is built on care, safety, cohesiveness, and strength. Like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu narrated this hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A very popular hadith. It's in Sahih Muslim. He says, Al Muslim, Ahul Muslim, La yal limu, Wala yuslimu, Oman kana fi hajati ahi, Kana Allah fi hajati, Oman farraja Muslim in kurba, Min kura bi dunya, Farraja Allah wa anhu kurba ta min kura bi yom al qiyama, Oman satara Muslim and satara Allah yom al qiyama. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving some. Some, some, some uh, criteria of being a good Muslim and, and relating. Because there's always the danger of uh, people being hurt when we get together. And therefore, place like this, or in the masjid in the Juma, that's the place, these are the only places we meet. Once we separate there, everybody go their way. Because there is no safety, nobody feels safe around other people. Nobody invites you to their home. You don't invite anybody to your home because when people come, instead of coming and interacting with you in a very sincere, friendly, brotherly manner and feeling your pain, they come in to collect news, they're looking around your house, or you are looking around the house to see what they have. So you can go tell your spouse how to get the same thing in the house, right? So the connection is really not on the basis of improving our relationships. As, as Muslim. So the Prophet Sallallahu said that the Muslim is the, bro the brother of another Muslim. He doesn't hurt him or her. And he does not leave them to fall into any place where they cannot get out. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anyone who gets into solving another Muslim's affair, Anybody who gets into another person's affair for the right reasons, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be in your affairs. So that's a very big compensation. You are doing something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator is saying, no worries, I will be there for you. And he said, وَمَنْ فَرَّجَ مُسْلِمٍ kurba." Anyone who takes a burden from another, from a Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take a burden from your back, Yom al -Qiyama. We don't even want to go into what it is, Yom al -Qiyama, when you have burdens to deal with. Just think of your credit card and how it might affect you. And if you declare bankruptcy in, in this country, that is nothing. That is nothing. Don't go with burdens, Yom al -Qiyama. It's heavy. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if you lift a burden from the back of a Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lift a burden, Yom al -Qiyama. And if you protect the secret or the affairs of someone else, Allah will protect you. So no one argues that we need to improve the condition of our Muslim communities to be stronger. There is no argument about that. Is there any, anybody thinks we are perfect? I want to see your hand up that we're done. Then you will come here and explain. So we all agree that we are not the worst but we are far from perfect. Maybe we are even far from being excellent, so we need improvement. Now, community strength needs body, it needs soul, and it needs shape. These are the three things. It needs the body, and it needs soul, and it needs shape. It needs numbers, it needs spirit, and it needs leadership, in other words. Now, among these three elements, the spirit is the consistently needed element. The spirit of the community is the one that we consistently need, need. All the time we need that to be there. Because without the spirit, the numbers count for nothing. And without the spirit, we don't get leadership, we just get chaos. So we need the spirit to be consistently there. The Prophet wasallam. this is the way he described numbers without spirit. 
He called it Ghutha. Ghutha. Ghutha is an Arabic word that is opposite to Samin. So they have a Ghath was Samin. A Samin is something that is fleshy. It is substantial. The Ghath is something that is empty. It has no substance. It exists without any root. This is the way Rasulullah described the community depending on whether it has soul and spirit or it doesn't. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, يُوشَكُ أَنْ تَتَدَاعَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْأُمَمْ كَمَا تَدَاعَ الْأَكَلَةُ عَلَىٰ قَسْعَتِهَا قَالُوا أَنْ يُقِلَّةٍ نَحْنِ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ بَلَا بَلْ أَنْتُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ كَثِيرٍ قَالَ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ كَثِيرٍ وَلَكِنْ غُثَاءٌ كَغُثَاءِ السَّيْنِ He said, there will come a time when it's not too far when the other umam will just invite each other against you. Now this means that Rasulullah said this message in Mecca or in Medina. In Medina, because he's speaking out of a time of strength. He said, it's coming. In Mecca, that was happening anyway, right? In Mecca, it was happening. So when he said it's going to happen, it wasn't happening then. So the, it's the Muslim community had built strength. But the Rasulullah is warning, so there will come a time when people will just invite each other, let's kick these ones, let's insult these ones, let us accuse these ones, let us drive away these ones, let's bomb these ones. Just like people who are dining would call everyone who belongs to the dining table to sit around. Hey Muhammad, hey Isha, hey Fulan, come sit, it's time for dinner. And the poor food has nothing to do, has nowhere to go. It's going to die a second time. Because it's cooked, now it's going to be digested. It's what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa this is the example he gave about us. And the Muslims wonder. They said, why? Would we be in small number at that time? Because there were a lot of people, Muslims that time. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, oh no, actually the opposite. You will, you will be very plenty in that time. Plenty for a lot of people. Two billion Muslims. But unto the Almighty Kadir, that there are so many of you. So many Muslims. Two people took Shahada yesterday. You know, two percent of Canadian population is Muslim. What? Um, hundred percent Somali population is, 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 is Muslim. Hundred percent Saudi Arabia Muslim. Eighty-five percent Syrian Muslim. This percentage that Muslim, two billion Muslims around the world, the fastest growing religion. But the Prophet ﷺ qualified it, say, well, like in Wutha, is saying, say, well, you don't have any substance. You are like the debris that falls on the way of the river. So they, they described it as a great number with no roots. So the debris, the falling leaves, they don't connect to any tree any longer. So as we, descri as we describe the, the river and the trees and the debris, just think, just mirror that with our Muslim Ummah today. No roots, no direction, because there is no leadership. You know, everybody is fighting, everybody is claiming they have the truth. No pace, we don't go at any pace. Two steps forward, one step backward. Everybody is taking matters into their own hands. No charisma, nobody fears you. You are Muslim, so why? Actually, I want to beat you up now. No charisma, no coordination. See, the debris, they go, one hit the tree, it stays there, the other one goes, and then the current comes and takes that one. Free for all to take or drop, going with the flow, whatever I say, we repeat it. No sense of belonging, you don't know where you belong, you can't go anywhere and feel safe. It's a very dire situation. Then Rasulullah continues and says, And Allah will take the fear or any sense of respect from the heart of your enemy. The people who see you as enemies, they don't have any hesitation towards you. Right. So the things you don't say about any communities today are the things you can say about Muslims and get away. Is that right? Yeah. 
if you if you single any community out in this country, for example, and accuse them as a community and paint all of them with one brush, you don't easily get away with that. You do it against Muslims, so what? Uh, nothing happens. So nobody actually regards you. What are you and Allah will throw wahan into your hearts. So they said, what is wahan? They said, Hubu dunya, the love of dunya, wa karahiya to mouth, and this extreme scare of death, right? I don't want to go there because what will happen to me, what will go on. I don't want to talk, I don't want to speak. Ya akhi, don't report it to the media. Don't say it to the lawyers. Don't call the police because we don't want to be in front of the police. Why are we so fearful of everything, even our shadows? Because the one is in our hearts. Hubu dunya, the love of the world. It comes in many shapes. Competition for dunya, undignified competition all the time. You see somebody has something, you don't know how they got it. Maybe they sold drugs and got it, you don't know. Well, you want it anyway. Always competing. Lack of consideration for the mission of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In our marriages, we don't think, if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting here, would he make this boy and this girl get married? Or would he ask for the things that I'm asking for? There's no consideration, it's just, you know, if my daughter goes for 50,000, what would the family that got 100,000 be saying about us? Yeah, that is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wrote in his hadith and give it to you and give it to you, right? So there is no consideration, lack of consideration for the mission of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is something bigger than 10 grand in marriage. There is something bigger than job in education. It comes also in, this, in the form of surrendering and fascination with trends. We go with trends and thinking and lifestyles and family structure. Whatever comes out, we are fascinated by it. We just go by it. We, they, we see something being discussed in the news, it becomes news to us. We don't have any initiative. When, it gets, when they stop talking about it, we are silent as well. Lack of leadership in social initiatives, whether locally, nationally, internationally, in ways that will dignify our communities. Right? If somebody does something great, Nobody says they are Muslim, and he doesn't say he is Muslim, and she doesn't say she's a, she's a Muslim. That's the right time to say I'm Muslim, because any other time they want to kick you. That's the time to say I matter. That's the time to say I matter. But we have to take the initiative, because like I said in the very first few paragraphs, Rasulullah sallallahu mission is "Ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lilalamin," that Allah has sent him as a mercy for the world. So how do we carry that mercy to the rest of the world? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Wallahi, in a long hadith, he said, Wallahi mal faqru akhsha alaykum walakin akhsha alaykum an tubsat al-dunya alaykum kama musibata ala al-ladhina ala man kana qablikum qablakum fa tanafasuha kama tanafasuha fa tuhlikakum kama ahlakatum. He said, my fear for you My fear for you is not poverty. Poverty is easy to overcome. My fear for you is that dunya will be open for you as it is open for others and you will be competing for it just like they are competing for it. In our communities and like every other communities, nobody knows what they want. We all watch TV and go to the stores. Whatever is sold, we buy. Do you remember getting out of your house without checking your fridge and seeing what is what is missing and going by and to buy that in return? So we actually take the flyers and say, what do they want me to buy? And open it and buy. Or go to the store and whatever is sold, we buy. Sometimes we go shopping in Congo and found that the things we needed are still not bought. Right? There is no concentration where a Muslim should be better than that. This is not about buying. This is just about where we have come. These are just small manifestations of where we are today, of the issues that we are facing. And we'll talk a little bit, inshallah, what the solution is. If we sold all our junks in our houses, 
up the shoes and the clothing and all the things that we've collected and we're looking for sheds behind our houses and storages for things that we don't use. So all of us have clothes in, the, in our closets that we haven't worn for a year or two. If we sell all of those, we can provide clean water for many people around the world. Just a matter of, just a way of thinking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in Allah Allah does not change what is with the people until the people themselves change what is with themselves. So we're coming to talk about solutions, but I want to explain this ayah a little bit. Allah says he doesn't come down, never, to change what is with a people. In Allah Allah the the word qawm is one word for a group of people. And he said, Hatta yughayyiru, until they change. He didn't say ma him. What is with them as a collective? Say ma bi anfusihim. Ala siratil jama. What is with their individual selves? Right? So what is with our individual selves? So everybody, starting from myself, stop pointing the finger at the other person. At the other person. Never said, I've done everything, he doesn't change. You are required to change. You are not required to change him or her. You are required to change yourself. I'm required to change myself. I'm required to remind you, but I'm not required to change you. So I can never have the excuse of you not changing, and therefore I am not changing. So if every one of us just does a change, wallahi, our community will change. That's what Allah SWT said, right? Because we're complaining of our leaders. I say the leaders are not imported from China. We produce them. They are just one of us. And as much as you point finger at the leader, when you are there, because you come from this, it is very difficult to be otherwise. It is just difficult to be otherwise. We've seen many that claim that once they are up there, they will do marvels. They will create Jannah on earth. And when they are up there, they do the opposite. So the, the solution, number one, number one is to just be good worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first thing. If we forget Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us forget ourselves. Allah says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهِ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ Do not be like the ones that forgot Allah, and Allah made them as a result forget themselves. So the first thing is to be a good worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two is to show care for communities. And you have to find, you don't have to wait. It is very hard for people to come and ask, but there are many downtrodden people in, in our communities. There are many brothers and sisters. We just have to look for them. People are dignified, so the ignorant think they are rich. Or sometimes we know they are poor, but we don't care. They are not even like the small each in our back. We don't want to scratch their back. Because we don't understand the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So let's start giving. Look out for every member of our community. We create funds. We can create funds, brothers and sisters. We can create funds that will allow people to buy houses without taking interest from the bank. There are many, there are many models for that. But if we don't come together, if we don't clean our hearts, how can we even have that conversation, right? Somebody else is exploiting you, taking from you. 5% for over 25 years for something that cost $300,000, $400,000, $500,000, and over here they said a million dollar house is just like, just like Tim Hortons for me. And for many years you are paying that. If you, if you have accountants really calculate that for you, you know how much you pay. It's a lot of money. Why don't we create something? Why do we always have to go by the train? So we have to look for, look out for our community members. And when we give someone, we dignify them. Don't give someone something in order to be able to 
to, 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 to take from them later on more, either from their dignity or to ha ask them to pay you more. This was told to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So no one should tell me, don't tell me, oh no, I'm not like that, whatever I give, I give for, for the sake of Allah. But then if the person you fight, next month you would give them. Then that's when you know if you're giving for the sake of Allah or not. When you can stay consistent, without anything actually shaking you, then you are doing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dignify people and give big. Let's give somebody something one time and they never ask again. How about that? Instead of making them dependent, every month come and receive food bank, get $20,000, give it to the brother or the sister, single mother, and they never ask again. How about that? Why is that so hard? Why give them 20,000 over 20 years with indignity? Why? Why do that? Why do that? Why not pay the sister's rent for six months secretly? Just go, sister, here. I want to see you pay your rent, please. Don't tell anybody. Go ahead. Put your lawyer gaze and walk. Six months, she doesn't have to worry. So, there are many ways to help our community. Number three, be active in the affairs of others for the right reasons. Like Rasulullah said, And mind you, when you do that, you're doing it for yourself. Because Allah, Alameen, the Lord of the world, says that he will pay you back. Number four, involve our families, brothers and sisters. This thing was spread in houses. The core of this thing was built in houses, not in conference halls. Not in conference halls. Get a book, get Fibos Sunnah, get some book that is dependable. Every morning, get struggle with it and read to your family. Learn it and read it to your family. Let the wife do it, let the husband do it. Husband and wife do it if you have children, put them around. Let them ask questions. Darul Arqam in, Ma in Makkah. That's where Islam started. People will meet and, and ask questions and listen to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. People will visit one another's houses. The Messenger of Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, got the greatest first encouragement from whom? Can you shout it out? From whom? Khadija radiallahu anha. Khadija. When he came Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, disoriented, afraid, not knowing, somebody just showing up in a cave, lonely in the mountains of Makkah, saying, read, squeezing him, letting him go, letting him go, and then seeing him over the horizon. Nobody has ever experienced that. He comes home shaking. He said, cover me. And she asked him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he explains to her. And the trust between the, the two of them is a model to follow. She said with all confidence, with all trust in this man, because he was straight. Now many of us want the woman to have confidence and trust in us, but we are not straight. He was straight. So she was very dedicated. She said, Kalla, no, no, no. I'm not what you're thinking. Wallahi, I swear by Allah. Now if you ever ask, have a question, somebody say, Okay, there was no Islam then. How did they swear by Allah? So actually they used to swear. They knew the name Allah because they, they all, they, 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 many of them belong to Christianity and the Arabs used to say Wallah in the, in the, in the Arab uh, poetry that, that existed. So this is what she said. So, Wallah, ma Allah abada. Allah will never let you down. She knew Allah. She didn't know how to worship Him. But she knew Him. She said Allah will never let you down. Inna kala tasnu rahim. And she had good reasons. And this is a lesson. When you are telling somebody you're giving them appreciation, don't say, man, you're very good. Because everybody can say that and it's very vague and people don't trust that. Now have something that is very specific that you want to encourage them to improve. She so said, because you, you connect with family. And that is not a very small thing. Not everybody does that. And you take people's trouble on. And you give to the people who don't have. You're not a rich man, but anything you have, you share. 
what you create day and every stranger that comes you are the first person to receive them Allah will never forsake you what you know Allah know what it is whatever the, the problem is you are there to help Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's what comes in down sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this is the way families can continue because it is true huh? this saying is true behind every successful man okay you know what it is it is true it is true it is very difficult if you go one direction and the woman goes another direction and the child goes another direction and the two of you are finding direction to give direction it's just confusing and the way is to be good worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and share among yourselves the message of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so when families are involved children learn love collaboration and values their challenges are also softened finally be strategic in our life choices for ourselves and our children by taking a gap analysis and strength based approach let's leave this oh everybody in the community is a doctor or an engineer so everybody in this family has to be a doctor or an engineer regardless of the stress that you go through we don't care if you're not a doctor you're not an engineer you don't belong to the al whatever family what is that where did that come from what is this competition for junior why don't we analyze the gap maybe this family need a psychologist maybe we need a faqih maybe we need a journalist maybe we need a lawyer why not just the money that's all 300,000 200,000 a year that you give to the real estate agency that's it that's what you need. that's legacy what about when we have problems what about when we need a journalist what about when we need a lawyer what about if they stop you from flying wrongly whom do you go to why don't you keep that money within the community what about we have so many youth that are struggling with mental illness and if they need counseling they have to go to people who don't understand their values when they they are learned they are school they have phd's they are psychiatrists but there are nuances of the deal that they are missing and the person that can address that the best is you and me brother and sister so let's have proper look at who we are as an umma before we make these very valuable choices so let's fill the gaps because together we are stronger. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah bless you and accept from us. Qulu qawli hadha wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.